in. Hello, 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 everyone. All right, I am approximately 30 seconds late, but you know what? You just have to forgive me. It's a Monday morning. So excited to be here. I am packed full of energy, packed full of fun, packed. Uh, I just want to have a good live stream. I mean, why not? You know what? We have to start our week off one way. We have to start our week off, I would hope, with some positivity, some information. And so we're just going to have a fun hour, hour, however long it takes, however long it takes us to get through our information. That's how long it's going to take. And we, again, are going to have a good time. All right. Let me push a couple of buttons here just to make sure we got everything going. Yes. So did you all have a good weekend? Did you do anything fun? Is there anything that, thank you, Fall Queen. Is there, um, I don't know, did anybody do anything special? Like get a tattoo or like me, go thrifting and find some amazing things, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Did you uh, maybe like have lunch with your kids? I don't know. Just basically anything you did can be fun, can be exciting. And that's kind of how I am with my um, my weekend. Because for my weekend, what I did this weekend is, again, I went thrifting. I went to the Goodwill in, um, I went to the Goodwill in Marietta. Now, I don't know if y'all like to thrift or not, but here in Riverside County, we have, um, if you go to Goodwill and you sign up for their newsletter, you actually get a 20% coupon off once a month. So I went in there with my 20% coupon and I want to, I will show you what I got. So we have to just wait just a moment. I'm going to show you what I got. And then, um, I don't know. I kind of had like one of those weekends where I felt like I needed to recharge my battery. Um, Fall Queen, I know. Goodwill, for me, Goodwill is like my favorite um it's my favorite place to thrift. It just, I get, I have really good luck at Goodwill. But I kind of took um, for, it was amazing for, I got sick. Oh no, I hopefully you're feeling better. So it, to me, um, I went thrifting, lots of fun. I kind of had that kind of weekend where I just wanted to, I don't know, kind of lay low, um, kind of recharge my batteries a little bit. It seemed by the time Friday rolled around, um, oh, Tina, I'm so glad that you were able to catch my live. I absolutely love you, all your comments. I appreciate you so much. But um, I, by Friday, by the time I was done with the live on Friday, um, I was just kind of, I, I, like I said, my energy was real, was kind of like low. So I just decided just to have like a little bit of a, a mental health weekend, even though I still was like recording things, I was still posting on social media, I made sure that I took time for myself and that felt really good. It, it was just, it was something that was well needed. And then um, the weather, the weather around here, I think is contributing to part of my, um, is part of my like, I don't know, I'm kind of in a funk. Not really like in a bad funk where I have to be careful and like be like, okay, Lonnie, what's upsetting you? But um, Alex, I don't know what my next tattoo is gonna be. I just know it's gonna be on my neck. But I had to make sure, um, yeah, like I said, I've been in a funk and I've been in a funk for you. <gasps> I know, Connie, you're in Texas. I've been watching all your TikToks and I absolutely think you are amazing. And I absolutely love everything that you post. But um, the weather around here has been really goofy. I mean, we were expecting thunderstorms all weekend. We didn't have any thunderstorms. We just had hot, muggy weather. And then today's supposed to be like 75 and then we're getting cool again. We're gonna be down in the 60s and I'm in Southern California. Now, if y'all don't know about the temperature in Southern California, especially inland, um, I am, we should be in the 80s and we're literally gonna be in the 60s. And so I'm like, oh, I wanna, I, I have all these cute things that I want to wear and I'm like, I'm such a chicken and I, I don't like being cold. I'm like, Arr. so then I went to get dressed this morning and I'm like, I couldn't figure out what I wanted to wear. Nothing, nothing 
spoke to me. I had one of those mornings where I had to um, I changed like five times because I had to find the right outfit that matched my energy and I wanted to up my energy a little bit I wanted to come in with a little bit more of a like a brighter disposition so I wore green eyeshadow to kind of brighten me up and then I have on my green sweater which I'm sitting here and I'm getting warm so I put on my green sweater and then I have on my Hello Kitty Doc Martens which if you've never seen them, I'm going to show them to you because, um, yeah, Texas gets really hot and muggy. I was in Texas one time and they had a tornado warning and I'm like, mm, no, I'm going to go home. So I wasn't really very thrilled about the tornado warning. All right. So look at these cute little Doc Martens that I'm wearing today. Um, they actually sent me these Doc Martens and I was so... Doc Martens is so cool. They send me all sorts of cool stuff. But they have little Hello Kitties on them. And they're all the little characters. And they have like the different, um, the different colors. So I thought with my yellow sweater, my cute little jeans, and then my little um, Hello Kitty Doc Martens, with my green eyeshadow, I was going to have a positive, uplifting day. And so far, as you can tell it's working so yes and so yeah so that was my morning that was my dramatic um reenactment of my morning but if you're out there oh valerie they're so cute i mean and they're so like i don't know they're I, I they're like a collector thing i collect these kind of like really cool doc martens for that reason and it's just it just made me feel, it made me feel good. So if you're out there and you're feeling your energy just dipping a little bit, my suggestion to you is going to be to just make sure that you wear like a little bit of a brighter color. Make sure that you, um, that you're comfortable in what you're wearing, that it matches your energy. And you know, we need, sometimes we just need to give our our energy a little bit of an extra boost so just make sure that you're doing that for yourself today because i know that that's what i had to do um connie says i went to a huge mall and saw a doc martin store made me think of you very cool you know what i have not been to a doc martin store um since since I went to San Francisco like a couple of times ago, because the only one I've ever been to, like been actually into is the one on Market Street. And you know what? Speaking of San Francisco, look at my cute little coffee cup. It's from Krispy Kremes and it's so cute. But um, I, I don't know how much longer it's going to be there. I mean, all the other stores that I always went to that I always like to go shopping to are closed down or are closing down. Um, Tina says, are you anywhere near San Diego? I have family there. Um, they have been, been there many times, probably cheaper online. You know what? Um, you can find, Connie, you can find Doc Martens on sale from different places, but typically Doc Martens are the same either in the store or out of the store. And I know that, that, um, Connie, they probably do have, um, they probably do have one in San Diego. I've just never been. Uh, to me, it's kind of like my treat that I get to go to a Doc Martin store anytime that I'm in San Francisco. So um, let's see. Oh, Instagram wasn't working this weekend. I don't know if anybody else had problems on Instagram, if you're on Instagram. But um, yeah, it was like it got to the point where I couldn't upload anything. I couldn't do comments. And I thought it was just me, but in my research this morning, I realized it was worldwide. So if anybody had any problems on their Instagram, it was not you, it was not your phone, it was Instagram itself. So, and again, I don't know, um, I, I don't know if anybody's still on Instagram, but if you were, don't worry about it, it wasn't you. And then um, I saw that they crowned a new winner of American Idol. Now, here's my question, because this is a really like a legitimate question. Does anybody still watch American Idol? Because, I mean, they first started in 2002, and I was all about American Idol, but I don't have live TV. 
I only have like Netflix and Hulu and Amazon. And so I don't watch live TV. And I was wondering, I mean, do people still watch it? I mean, let me know. Is that something that you still actively watch? Because I was like, I, when I was like doing my little research, I was like, wow, American Idol still on? I had no idea. And I just didn't know if I was the only one who was like so out of touch with current affairs or if it's like a real thing. So let me know what you think. So then, um, like I said, I was in kind of a funk this weekend and I kind of did my little mental health kind of re, um, I recharged my batteries. Oh, Valerie, you do. Very cool. You know what? I'm probably the only one who's out of touch. But to me, it's like, um, I don't know. I just, it's, I am such a sucker when it comes to like, like, I remember when the judges were this, or I remember that, or I remember this. But I think the last season I watched was when Adam Lambert was on there. So it's been a while since I've watched American Idol. Tina says, no, you don't watch it. No, I don't. Again, I'm not 100% sure. I mean, Valerie, I, it, I'm sure you still enjoy it. But to me, again, I don't have live TV. So, um, but... I did do a couple of videos and one of the videos that I did is I showed you all my outfits that I wore last week and by far like the most favorite item from last week was my cool little purse and this little bag has so it's it's such a sentimental piece for me that sometimes I don't really um I don't wear it just because I'm afraid to get it dirty or to hurt it because my mom actually thrifted this purse and um, my mom passed away if you don't know that so she's no longer here with us and um, it's just the coolest little bag and it always reminds me of my mom see it zips up and it's just so cute so whenever I go thrifting I'm always on the hunt I always have my eyes open for something like this because I mean this is where she found it she used to go thrifting all the time and she loved to find like these really cool little purse things but I just wanted to show you this purse and give you the story behind it I know, Connie, this is like the perfect little bag and it holds just the right amount of stuff. And it's so cute because my mom, you know, my mom never had money when she was growing up and we were poor when I was a kid. So everything that she bought, she took really good care of. And so um, what she would do is she would put bags inside of her purse to keep it nice um, for when she wasn't using it. So I have all of these grocery bags that my mom put in her purse that I keep in my purse. So it reminds me of her. And every time I use this and I pull those grocery bags out, I think about my mom and I'm like, oh mom, you're so crazy. So I did that and again, the clear winner of all of my outfits, all of my accessories, all of my bags was this purse. And I absolutely agree. This is an amazing, amazing purse. All right. Another thing I did is I went thrifting and let me show you what I found. I walked out with three things. And again, um, Goodwill in my area, I'm able to use a 20% uh, discount, which I'm super excited. I love it. And it's not everywhere. I've gone thrifting in Orange County and I'll be like, can I use my discount? And they'll be like, Ooh, what are you talking about? I'm like, oh no, you know what? I have this discount. Y'all send it to me. It's Goodwill. I'm in a Goodwill store. And they're like, no, that is only for the Inland Empire. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll just take my poor ass back to the Inland Empire and go use my 20% discount because you won't let me do that. So I'm just like, uh, so anyway, I found three things. And one of the things um, is you always look very, I think you were going to say, so I always look something. Hopefully you were going to say, I always look okay. All right. So I did find one free people item and I got this for $5 and it's this cute little tank top. 
and I absolutely love the color. And it's a little, I have a lot of these tops. I have these tops in um, white, black, green, burgundy. I've never had a blue one before, but for some reason, um, <laughs> Tina says, sorry, Lonnie, sending my text before I'm done. You type away, honey. You ask anything you want uh, or say anything you want. But I love this color. And it runs a little bit smaller than the other ones that I have, but that's perfectly okay because it's kind of an oversized shirt. But I love this color and I got it for five bucks. Again, free people. And you can find a lot of free people things that uh, when you go thrifting, I'm telling you, because I found this one. Now, I found a jacket and I just told you that it was hot and muggy and all of that. And I live in Southern California. Is it cold in Southern California? Typically not. But for me, I think it's cold. And when I found, um, thank you, Marshmallow. And when I found this jacket, I had to have it. And you're going to see why. Look at this jacket I found. Is this not the coolest suede jacket. I love this jacket. Now, it was $29, and I had that discount for 20% off, and it is just amazing. And yes, I'm gonna try it on for you. Tina says, I was always saying you look beautiful. Thank you, I appreciate that very much. But check out this jacket. Again, I got it for $25 and I think it is just, I think it's perfect. I know Tina, this is amazing. It's a Wilson um, leather and it's a size medium, but it, I think it fits perfect because I like that little bit of an oversized look. And like I said, it, I live in Southern California, but I know like if I go up to San Francisco or during the fall, um, I'm gonna be able to absolutely get use out of this jacket. And even when I was um, when I was trying it on, the a lady, a very nice lady, came up to me and she's like, "Oh my gosh, that's a great jacket." And I'm like, "Oh, I know." And then she like hung around, and I think she was waiting to see if I was gonna put it back. And I'm all clutching my jacket. But she told me that she just moved here from Ohio and that she gave all her jackets away and she really wished she hadn't because she thought it was going to be super warm in California. But she's like, I kind of regret it now because I wish I had more jackets. And I'm like, you got to come to Goodwill earlier. I'm telling you right now. So this is a Wilson Leathers and then it's like a Maxima. So... Again, 25 bucks. I thought it was really cute. Then I found one more thing, and I want to show you what I found, you, found, and we're going to go to our main topic of what is your love language. But what I found, hold on, let me, let me grab it. What I found is, because I'm going to build an outfit for you. So what I found was this, this random little top, okay? and ugh, as I'm falling apart. So I found this really cute little random, I don't know, this reminded me of the top I used to wear in the 70s, okay? So it's like, it's kind of like a little baby doll kind of top, but I thought it was cute and it kind of has like that, I don't know, kind of like I'm seven again and I'm um, in the 70s and I'm wearing this cute little top with a pair of pants. So what I'm going to do is on Wednesday, I'm going down to the Free People store in San Diego because I told you all I was going to be going to the main, main Free People store because the ones I've been going to are a lot smaller than this huge Free People store. So I put my outfit together and I'm going to show it to you. And if it looks good when I really put it on on Wednesday, I'll do my live with it on. But for now, I'm just going to give you my concept of what I think it's going to look like. So I'm going to wear this cute little top and I'm going to pair it with my moxie barrel pull-on jeans. So I'm going to kind of have like, 
you know, kind of like a flowy top with my oversized jeans, but these jeans are really cute because they're cropped. So they don't go um, all the way down past my ankle. Then I'm gonna wear my white Jaden boots. So I'm gonna have that look going on. And since I'm going down to San Diego and it's always cooler in San Diego, I was gonna wear this cute little fluffy sweater over the top of it. So that is my concept for that shirt that I'm going to be wearing on Wednesday when I go to the Free People store. And that shirt cost me five bucks. So um, I need some new bras to wear with tanks. You know, I haven't worn an actual bra in probably 10 years. I only wear these little bralette things and um, I don't really care if they show and I don't, um, I, I don't care if they match the color, anything like that. But I really just kind of um, go with like, you know what, it is what it is. I, you know what, it's bad enough that we have to wear them. I'm not going to be uncomfortable and I am not going to be having any of these rules and regulations about how, um, how, you know, they have to be a certain this or a certain that, you know, they have to be comfortable and whether they show or they don't show again, I don't care. So long as, so long as I, you know, so long as I'm comfortable, that's all that matters. So Tiggy, when you're out there looking for, you know, a, a new bra, just get yourself like a little bralette and you can get them in all sorts of cute colors. And again, my philosophy is so long as you're comfortable and you are, um, it's covering what you want covered, then that's really, that's, that's the only thing you really need to be concerned about. So I wouldn't put, um, I don't know, I just wouldn't put too much effort into um, buying a bra. That's, that's just me though. Thank you, Tina. Okay, so what we're going to talk about, what the main subject is for today, it's, it's called knowing your love language. And I didn't know anything about this until Robert came up with this subject for our podcast that we did on Saturday that is now out and available on both iTunes and Spotify. And then also too, I'll be uploading the video here to YouTube um, after we're done with this live. But it's called Your Love Language. And he did the test. And um, Tina says, I hate bras. They are very uncomfortable. I'm going to look into some of those bras. Yeah, you know what? Just those little bralettes. I get them at Nordstrom's Rack for like nine bucks. Free People has some great ones. But I don't, I don't do anything with metal. And I don't do anything that has snaps. So that's just, like I said, that's just my deal. But so Robert came up with this quiz. Well, he found this quiz. He didn't make the quiz. But what the quiz is, is that basically it's 30 questions and I have the quiz down below just in case you want to ask it. Tiggy says, I lost a lot of weight, but the girl still needs support. Yeah, you know what? And I get that. And just, but even if you wear a bra bra, just make sure you're comfortable. Again, sometimes I think that we, I don't know, sometimes I just associate bras with like, you know, they're so restricting and, but I get it. And, you know, I don't want to ever be like, oh, you should wear this if you're not comfortable with that. So, um, but anyway, back to the love language. So, um, it's this quiz that you take and you basically find how you give your love. There's like five different ways that people can show love according to this quiz. So, I started taking the quiz and I'm like, this is really weird because they're asking questions that I'm really like, don't really relate to be, you know, for me and my kids, but it's not really, it works in all relationships, but when you're taking the quiz, you know, you take it and you answer it like you're in a relationship because I haven't been in a relationship in for I can't even count how long it's been, but I still know what I like and what I don't like and how I react to love. Um, love you, love your style. I'm over 50 and wear what I want and wear what I love. Absolutely, that's perfect. 
So I'm sitting there and I'm taking the quiz. I'm like, Robert, this is really weird. He's like, mom, he goes, just pretend like you, you have a relationship. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, this makes sense now. So I did my quiz and I'm going to give you the five different categories in the order of my love language. And I'm going to tell you how I kind of relate to them. So the one that I um, scored the highest at 33% is words of affirmation. And it says, actions don't always speak louder than words. If this is your love language, unsolicited compliments mean the world to you. Hearing the words, I love you are important. Hearing the reasons behind the loves sends your spirit skyward. Insults can leave you shattered and are not easily forgotten. You thrive on hearing kind and encouraging words that build you up. All right. So that is words of affirmation. And that absolutely 100% resonates in me. I mean, when I was younger, I was the invisible child. I was the child that, you know, um, that nobody saw. So I didn't get those praisings and I didn't get those affirmations and I didn't get the good job, you know, well done or anything like that. So for me, if I get that kind of um, praise, I guess you could say, or that kind of acknowledgement, if I feel seen, it definitely makes me feel loved. You know, it's like, for example, sometimes, you know, my kids are my kids and, you know, we all do this to our parents, but sometimes I'll talk and they literally don't listen. And I'm always like, wow, that was really painful. And it now makes me realize that it's not them, it's how I'm perceiving it. It's how I'm hearing it. So not, with them not knowing that I thrive on that, it wasn't really them trying to be rude to me or to not show me love. It's just that they didn't realize that how important it was to me. So now that they know whenever I'm talking, you know, about anything serious or anything like that, they have a much more concentrated, like, I'm going to listen to what she's saying because it's important to her. Um, Tiggy says, oh no, Connie says, yep, affirmation sounds like me. I never got positive praise in my childhood. Absolutely. 100%. Um, Tiggy says, I hear myself talking when I listen to you. Tiggy, we definitely have a lot of um, same stories that um, you, we have definitely resonate a lot when, when we share things like this. So to me, that made perfectly good sense. I'm like, yeah, you know what? I can see that. I know that. So when, and you know what? And the thing is, is that with love and with like a love language like this, I mean, the person that you're talking to, whether it's your child, your spouse, your friend, anybody like that, you know, it's really easy for us to be like, well, they should listen to me. They should know. They should do this and they should do that. But me as an adult, what I need to understand and what I need to remember is that maybe they are, maybe there's something going on with them. Maybe they're not purposely ignoring me or dismissing me. Maybe they got something going on. So I don't take it as personal anymore. You know, I don't, it's not as black and white as it used to be. And by knowing my, my love language, it has helped me, you know, basically be like, um, it's just helped. It just, you know, it, understanding why we do the things we do help. So now if you're wondering, Robert and Brandon, Brandon and I are both words of affirmation. We both resonate with that. Good job. Well done. I'm listening to you. You are valid. Now, Robert, on the other hand, is um, the second one on my list, and that's acts of service. So acts of services, can helping with housework really be an expression of love? Absolutely. Anything you do to ease the burden of responsibilities weighing on acts of service, person will speak volumes. The words he, the words he or she most want to hear is, let me do that for you. 
Laziness, broken commitments, and making more work for them tell speakers of the language their feelings don't matter. When others serve you out of love and no obligation, you feel truly valued and loved. So basically what that is, it's, it's like actions speak louder than words, if that is your love language. You know, it's like knowing that, um, it's like, because like with Robert, like I said, Robert, his acts of love would be to like helping me with my computer, um, doing things for me, you know, um, maybe running an errand for me or something like that. So what happens is, is that with Brandon and I, since we have the both same love language, it's very easy for us to be like, you know, to tell each other in a non-spoken way how much we care for each other. Whereas with Robert, poor Robert, he's all like, I love you just as much as anybody else. I'm just showing it to you in a different way. So now it's easier for me to step back and be like, wow, yeah, you know what? Those little things that he has done, those little helping acts of service is his ling love language. He doesn't have to say it exactly like Brandon and I. And that's been really, again, very helpful in hearing and knowing how somebody is speaking their love language. So the next one, number three, and this one rated, um, came in at 20% for me, says quality time. In quality time, nothing says I love you like full undivided attention. Being there for this type of person is critical, but being really there with the, with the TV off, fork and knife down, and all chores and tasks on standby makes you feel truly special and loved. Distractions, postponed activities, or the failure to listen can be especially hurtful. Whenever it's spending uninterrupted time talking with others, with someone else or doing activities together. You deepen your connection with others through sharing time. And that came in number three with me and at 20%. And you know what? I do like quality time. I mean, I like quality time with a loved one and all of that. But to me, it's it, it just doesn't resonate as much. It's not as important. And um, so that one smack dab went right in the middle. So if you have somebody in your life, if your significant other or your child or, you know, whoever it is, if they rate really high on quality time, then you need to make sure, like it said, if you're having a conversation, put your phone down. You know what? If you're eating dinner and they're talking to you, you know, listen to them. So to me, it's like, it's a brilliant little test because it, again, just helps so much in interpreting what people are doing. And it, it helps. I mean, like I keep saying, it's like, it's, it's, it's been really very cool to know their love language for them to know mine. Now, here's where we get into the tricky part because it's the lower end of the um, scale. And I'm going to tell you why I scored so low on the ending part. All right. So coming in at 10% was physical touch. A person, and this is what it says, a person whose primary language is physical touch is not surprisingly very touchy. Hugs, pats on the back, and thoughtful touches on the arm. You can always, or can, they can always be ways to show excitement, concern, care, and love. Physical presence and accessibility are crucial, while neglect or abuse can be unforgivable and destructive. Appropriate and timely touches communicate warmth, safety, and love to you. And I totally get it. And I understand the difference between a warm, loving, like guiding, you know, like maybe somebody putting their hand on your shoulder or grabbing your arm and taking you um, aside. But for me, it feels too controlling. To me, I don't... <sighs> I mean, and it's not like I don't like a good hug or, you know, the touch or anything like that. But to me, if you love me, you don't have to put your hands on me. And that comes from my marriage. All right. There wasn't a whole lot of demonstrative, um, like loving touch, 
So it was always a very controlling marriage. So for me, the idea of somebody like touch, 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 it makes me, it makes my skin crawl. And I just don't, I don't like it. You know, I see people, I'll be out and about and I'll see a couple and the gentleman is like, hovering over the lady and like you know guiding her and and very like this and I'm sure that's his love language I'm sure that he's not doing anything inappropriate I hope not or trying to diminish her in any way but it is just like it just makes my skin crawl and I'm just like stop stop doing that leave her alone she can do it so that is how abrasive same thing for you Courtney yeah so that's how abrasive and that's how negative I react to somebody whose love language that is so then I started thinking I'm like okay Lonnie well, let's just say you know a miracle happens and you decide to start dating somebody what happens if that's how they show their love I mean is it unfair of me to be like you know what I really dig your company but hands off buddy and I'm like I, I don't, it, it, it kind of got me to thinking. So my, my way of thinking, and maybe I'm, a, I'm an eternal optimist, but I like to think that there can be a, um, a meeting of comfortability. And by that, I mean, I would be like, hey, you know what? I, I love you, but I don't want you constantly touching me. But then on the other hand, I could be like, well, Lonnie, you know what? You can put your guard down. You don't always have to be defensive. You don't always have to think that that's a controlling thing. So what I'm trying to get to is, is if you were, if you were in this relationship where um, you love this person, but you don't love their love language, I am a true believer. I think with communication and time and with effort on both parts, you can, you can have a meeting of the minds. I mean... I admit, like I said, maybe I am an eternal optimist and romantic. But that's just what I think. So if you're out there and you, you and your loved one take this test and there's like from one extreme to the other, I say, again, just have some communication and work on it together. Because every relationship, I don't care if it's with your partner or your friend or your children, Every relationship takes work on both parts. It's not a one-man band. So I would definitely talk. Um, Connie says, I absolutely have problems with people who are controlling, can't stand it. Yeah, Connie, but I think that that's from our past relationships. And I think that that is just from our past, like I know for me, my past marriage, because um, he was, you know, like I said, there was no, there was no, um, there was no kindness and there was no softness and there was no love behind him putting his hand on me. So I learned to associate that with, um, with a negative reaction. So I become very guarded and, um, that's just how I, that's just how I grew. That's just how I am. That's how I developed. So the last love language, again, at 10% rated really low for me is, um, receiving gifts. It says, don't mistake this love language for materialism. The receiver of gift thrives on the love, thoughtfulness, and the effort behind the gift. If you speak this language, the perfect gift or gesture shows that you are known, you are cared for, and you are apprised above whatever was sacrificed to bring you the gift to you. A missed birthday or a hasty thoughtless gift would be disastrous. So would the, so would the absence of everyday gestures, gifts of heartfelt symbols to you of someone else's love and affection to you. All right. So Tina says, okay. So Tina says, I wear my heart on my sleeve. I'm also very affectionate affectionate, but I also like my space, need my alone time and definitely don't like anyone to tell me what to do or constantly be around me. 
Absolutely. Tiggy says same here. No, Connie says same here. Tiggy says my husband gives gifts that his, that's his love, love language. He doesn't speak his feelings, etc. Yeah. And you know what? And that's, and that's just the thing. And it's a beautiful way. I mean, all of these love languages are beautiful. It just depends on how they trigger us in our own journey. So for example, let's go back to my marriage. I mean, my ex-husband would be brutally mean and then buy me a buy me something. And I always associated it with, um, I always associated it with like, um, he did it out of guilt. And so, you know, anytime that I would get a nice gift, I'd be like, what did you do? Or we would have a fight and I would know exactly what he did. So for me, if somebody comes bearing gifts, again, from my past trauma, I have a hard time accepting it. And I have a hard time being like, oh, wow, that was really nice. But then again, if I'm in a relationship with somebody who is that genuinely their love language and they're doing it out of kindness, I guess, um, yeah, what is the, what, is there, okay, because I'm, Courtney, I'm kind of watching. So let me know if I need to do anything. Um, so to me, it's like, again, I think with communication and with, just both parties understanding each other, any relationship, any language can be, it can be okay. You know what, if I was in a relationship and that person's love language was gift giving, and even though I, I rated so low on it from past trauma, I would like to think that I was capable of growing and knowing and seeing this individual for who they are and not and, and not making them suffer over past past relationships. So again, I don't know, like I keep saying, maybe I'm an optimist, maybe I'm a romantic, but I like to think that out of all of those love languages that we can learn, we can accept, we can just appreciate people for the way that they love instead of being like, you need to love me in a certain way or I don't like your love, it needs to be this way. And I think that this quiz is more about understanding what you need as a person and then understanding the person who is giving you your love. And, you know, like I said, a couple of them triggered me really a lot on just past trauma and I'm always trying to grow and learn from past trauma. So, um, yeah, just don't walk up to me, touch me and give me a gift and we're all good. So that is, um, that is my, my little topic for the love language. And I really hope that, um, you learn something about yourself, about your loved one. And again, if you want to take the quiz, I have it down below in the description and, um, on TikTok, if you want, I can, um, <sighs> Yeah, if you want to, you, you just go to the description or it's called the love language, the five, the five, the five languages of love. And you can find that also. So I now understand my children a little bit more. I understand my past relationships a little bit more. Um, my ex-husband aside, I think the, um, the relationships that I have been in, that perhaps that they were coming from a better spot than I had um, thought they were. And so, but you know what? We live and learn. I'm 58 years old and I'm still living and I'm still learning. So now we're going to switch up the gears a little bit as I drink more of my coffee. <laughs> and the Krispy Kremes in San Francisco was on Fisherman's Wharf. So I went there with my niece once and we had a little girls weekend and it was a lot of fun. So I'm going to open up some stuff. And I got this from, it's called The Pleasing Company. And it's a makeup company that sent me some stuff. So we're going to see what we got. Because the last one I got, um, I really liked the, what did I really like? Oh, I really liked the brow stuff. And I really liked, um, <gasps> Hello, D. So now Tiggy is also on TikTok. I love it. You know what? You need to follow Connie too because she's amazing. She just did this little TikTok that I saw this morning 
And it was her tip for if your shirt is too big, you can take a hair band and kind of tie it up on the side and make it um, a totally different look. And I thought that that was a really cool fashion tip and I really liked it. And I, again, think everybody should be on TikTok just having their own self-expression and having a lot of fun. And then TikTok, you need to come over and watch me on YouTube also. All right, so I got a, this is the Pleasing Company. This is a gloss medium formula blender. Okay, it's a blendable high shine um, foundation. So let's see what it looks like. No, this is not a foundation. So this is a medium formula, blendable high shine gloss. It says the glow formula creates brilliant shine for your lips, eyes, and skin. Use alone to quench and create radiance or as a medium to create a shiny sheer finish with powder and cream color. So basically you can add this to your foundation and make it a little bit more of a glow foundation, or you can wear it on your own, on your lips, or just like a little serum. So that's pretty cool. See, little thing right there. Um, you rock that beautiful eyeshadow, looks beautiful. Thank you. You know what, it's, um, I wore green and I don't usually wear green eyeshadow just because my eyes are green. And sometimes I like the contrast of the different colors that actually make my eyes look a little bit greener. Okay, so now this is a pressed powder pigments. So speaking of different colors, let's see what's in here. So exciting. Yes, this is exciting. 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 Hello, Pamela Anderson. Ooh, I like the tin. If nothing else, this is a really cool tin. And you open it up and you take off this little stuff. Now, this packing stuff like this, no, I was thinking something else. I was thinking you could use this as, because remember I showed you that little tin I have that I clean my brushes on, my eyeshadow brush? I was thinking it was the same thing, but it's not, so disregard that. Um, Maya Martel, hello from Arizona. Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. Brandon was just in Arizona a couple of um, weeks ago. All right, so this says, I got to read it the right way. I'm still not reading it the right way. It says, this palette contains right wet to dry powders that create indefinite colors and textures. The magnetic container lets you be free to arrange each color as you like and add to your favorite um, pants. Pans. Oh, not pants. Pans. All right. So I'm trying to figure out what the heck this is. So it's a little thing like this. All right. And then you take it out. Hold on. Um, not for use in eye area. It's a good thing I read that because I was going to put that on my eye. What the heck? Let me see. I'm trying to figure it. Oh, okay. Oh, wow, look. So this little tin right here is magnetic and it moves all around. I don't know why, but it does. All right, so now, hold on, let's figure out what this is. Apply with fingers, brush, or sponge. Blend with gloss, medium, or touch water to create a fluid formula. This palette contains eight wet-to-dry powders to create infinite colors and textures. The mag magnetic container lets you free to arrange each colors you like to add to your favorite pa pans. Um, Lauren says, I think you can use water with it. It's saying wet-to-powder. Yeah, but, okay, here's the thing. Oh, you know what? Okay, hold on. So, they, we got this gloss. So we could add this gloss to this 
and make um, make like a wet to dry eyeshadow. But this one right here, hold on, thur, hold on, hold on. Oh, as I'm scratching it with my fingernails. This little round one right here. Okay, this little round one. This one right here is not for your eyes. So this one would have to be more of a blush. And then if I'm reading everything correctly, because I don't want to put something on my eyes that aren't supposed to be on my eyes, because I woke up on Sunday and my left eye was all puffy. And I don't want to make it puffy again. So I think these two right here can be for your eyes. And then this one is your blush. Or maybe that could be like a foundation. No. Okay. So we'll figure that one out because we also have this one. Now this one's a little bit different. So this one is universal cream pigments. This box contains three intense pigment creams that can be used alone or mixed together with your gloss. Um, and it says to boost gloss finish to create more sheer textures. So let's see what this one is. I tell you, it is like going on a scavenger hunt. Oh, okay. So it's this. All right. So now... All right, so this is um, boo, 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 Universal Cream Pigments. So let's open it up. Ooh, wow. Okay, look at that color. That's a really cool bright yellow. So I, I was gonna put it on my face and I this is definitely for your face, but let's just put it like right here and pretend like this is my eye. So that would be the eyeshadow, which I think is actually really cool because you have like a yellow and I think the yellow with my eye color would be really pretty. Then it has a, this is like a turquoise blue. I don't know why I put a question mark at the end of that because it's, I know what it is. It is a turquoise blue. Um, you can use them anywhere on your face, such as eyes, cheeks, or lips. <gasps> oh, that is, so, oh my God, Lauren, you are a genius because I wanted to do a blue lipstick. And how pretty of a blue lipstick would that be? And so I can, um, I can try a blue lip with that. Fun, fun, fun. Uh, you know what? This is really cool. I'm going to have fun with these. It's like, it's like a little um, thing of paint. And then the last one is like a, it looks like a really cool berry. Now this one would be good for your cheeks. So I can. So, wow. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, hence why they say it's universal. Yeah, Lauren, I know, but you know what? I am also, um, yeah, I'm also the one that does this while they're on live. Oh, my Lanta. I think this is like a stain. Hold on. Hold on. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. Let's see what this does. Okay, so it's a very cool little blush, but look, I look, okay, let's see if I can fix this. Oops, no kidding. Oh, D, what did I do? Okay, so I will tell you right now, it's very strong pigment and I absolutely think it is fun and cute because I can't get it off my hand, but let's see if I can't rub this in a little bit. <laughs> All right, uh, makeup remover. Yep, you still look cute. Well, thank you. I mean, I definitely have, oh boy. You know, I can see it on my phone 
and um, it's definitely very bright. So I will, you know what, maybe instead of doing the pat, 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 I will do, ooh, you know what would be really cool? Okay, here's how I'm going to wear it. Is that's all over my fingers, is I'm actually going to put this on underneath my foundation. I'm going to do um, a bit strong, but only need one dot. Yeah, definitely one dot. And I'm going to put it underneath my foundation because I like that underpainting, how it, it kind of gives you just like that glow from underneath your foundation. And I will do that. And what I'll do is in order to save my makeup look for today is I will try to get it off my hands for one thing, but I'll go in and I'll put on another layer of foundation and I'll probably blend it out a little bit when I have something more than just a paper towel, but I will um, blend it out a little bit and then put on another layer of light foundation. Again, just to kind of give it that underpainting. So tomorrow, here's what I want to do for tomorrow is I'm going to, it's going to be kind of scary because this stuff doesn't come off, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to wear the blue lips because I think a blue lip is beautiful. So I'm going to put that blue on my lip. I'm going to put the yellow on my lid. And then I'm going to do this as the underpainting. And again, this is called the Pleasing Company. And I'll put a link in my description down below. And um, so if you want to check out any of them, those little like tubes of that liquid cream was, um, yeah, it, 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 that, those little liquid cream things are going to be a be very cool because I was watching RuPaul's Drag Race last night. I'm watching the, the All-Star um, series now. And I love their makeup. And sometimes I get so frustrated with myself because I don't think my makeup shows enough. Sometimes I'm too timid with my makeup. And I'm telling you right now, with these little tubes, there's nothing timid about these little tubes of makeup. So tomorrow, because tomorrow is Tattoo Tuesday, I'm going to come fully in my bright, just amazing makeup and inspired by um, RuPaul's Drag Race. Um, Tina says, I love it when you show us makeup products. You've given me a few items I bought and loved. Awesome. And you know what? And my makeup journey has been so fun. And it was one of those things that even though I'm always like, wear what you want, you know, do whatever you want, be whoever you want. Over 50 doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want. Um, I, I was finding myself holding back with my makeup. And so it's been a real true inspiration for me. And it, I've definitely pushed forward with the idea that even though I'm over 50, um, hello, opera mama, even though I'm over 50, I'm pushing 60, you know, I, I can be as bright and as bold in my makeup as I can be in any other aspect of my life. You know, whether it's my blue buzzed hair or my tattoos and now my makeup. And so it's been a really cool journey, Tina, to be able to be like, wow, you know what? I can try this and I'm okay with it. And if it doesn't work, you know what? I'm okay with that. That's what makeup remover is about. And that's one of the things that really made me stop and be like, why, Lonnie? Why did you do this? Why did you hold yourself back when makeup is temporary? You put it on and you wash it off at night and you start over in the morning. And to me, it's like, I don't know. I don't know why I held myself back for so long. Um, my daughter works for Ulta, so I get to try lots of new things. Oh, Dee, that is so cool. And you know what? And I am so incredibly blessed that I have companies like the pleasing company send me these things and I can share them with you and let you know what works and what doesn't work. And you know, I don't get paid for doing this and I don't want to get paid for doing this. I just want to hang out with you and share makeup and fashion and just have a good time together. Um, Connie says, Ooh, blue. I am so excited about that blue. I'm just hoping it's dark enough because I kind of wanted a dark blue. Um, Valerie says, can't wait to see the blue lip. Me too. Connie says, ooh, I love my jeans um, blue. Oh, I love my blue jeans, my jeans blue eyeliner. Um, age doesn't matter. No, it does not. 
So now on um, Friday, I was talking to you all on Friday about how I ha was working on something. Um, hold on here, just a second. Um, love your style, especially the outfits with Martin's. Um, we are going to get some Martin's giveaway soon. Miss it. You know what? I did used to do a Doc Martin giveaway. I did a dark. I gave away, I think, three pairs of Doc Martens. And um, that was when I was working my corporate job. And I had a um, substantial income. And I no longer have a substantial income that matches my corporate job. But you know what? I will, um, maybe what I'll do is maybe I'll reach out to Doc Martens and see if they'll send me a pair that I can um, raffle off, you know? I, I have a very good relationship with Doc Martens, so maybe I'll try to maybe I'll try to do something like that for you all. Because I mean, it is. Um, I think that would be that would be really fun, and I'll see if I can't do something like that. I just can't afford to buy a new pair. Um, Tina says I've always liked um, you. Always like great. You always you always like great. I have hazel eyes and they are very green. So I like to try eyeshadows that bring out the color, just put a, long, a little lighter. Yeah, you know what? I always find that for my eyes, like a purple, a violet really just pops them out. And so I think that the um, yellow eyeshadow is really going to bring out the green. So I was talking about how on Friday I was having a Zoom meeting and I was talking about like something I was working on for you all. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about it and why I'm not going to do it. And what it was is a company reached out to me and I'm not going to say the name of the company, but they reached out to me and they're like, hey, you know what? Do you want to go on vacation and have your some people off your platform go with you? And in the beginning, it sounded like a great thing. You know what? It'd be like, great, yeah, let's all go on vacation. But for me, it wasn't the kind of vacation that um, I wanted to go on with you all. I mean, I would love to do like a retreat to where like a small group of people, we go and we, we like maybe somewhere in Carmel or something along the ocean and we do yoga and we have like meditation and we talk about self-confidence and fashion and, you know, stuff like that. And what this particular company offered was basically trips around the world that I would have very minimal input as to where we went or what we did. And for me, I didn't feel comfortable and truthfully in all transparency, I didn't feel comfortable selling y'all a vacation package. And I, before I make any decision and before I make any sort of, um, any sort of business decision when it comes to me, my platform or you, I always think about how it makes, how it represents me and, and me, you know, I did not want to, I didn't want to sell your vacation package. So if and ever I can put something together to where we can go and kind of just have like a three or four day retreat to where we can just, you know, support each other as, you know, as individuals and hang out and have some good food and, and do that, I'll definitely do it. But I am not, I, I passed on the other one. So I'm always thinking about ways of, you know, connecting with you on a higher level. It just, that wasn't the right thing to do. Um, but yep, um, yep, that would be fun. Good luck with that. Love you. Yeah, um, were you talking about the trip or the Doc Martin thing? Because I'm not too sure which one you were you were wishing me luck on because I need luck on both of those. But I just think that, you know, eventually one day I am going to be able to put that together. And you know what? It would be super cool. We'll just hang out. We'll have like a slumber party. We'll do makeup and we'll just do fun stuff like that. But it's going to have to be something that I'm comfortable with. And it's going to have to be something that I can present to you wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly knowing that I am watching out for you and making sure, uh, both of those. Okay, cool. Making sure that, um, again, that I represent you and I watch out for you and all of that good stuff. What, what? Oh no. Um, I don't know who you are, so go away. 
Am I still connected? Am I still connected? I had a phone call come in. Oh no, come back. So that was it. And you know what? And truthfully, I thought about you when I was in the meeting and I thought about you after I was done and I thought about you over the weekend and I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't be like, hey, you know what? I just, I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, sometimes I'm weird like that, but I would rather be able to sit here and talk to you on a daily basis and you, um, and, and you know that everything I'm saying is transparent and, um, and from my heart. So there you go. So there you go. So tomorrow is Tattoo Tuesday. All right. And um, what other platforms do you go live on? The only two platforms I go live on is TikTok and YouTube. I have not been live on Instagram um, for a very long time. And I don't go live on Facebook. So my two primary live platforms right now are um, TikTok and YouTube. And I can stream on Facebook. I just don't choose to. And this is just right now, right now, I just have my little morning show and I'm just enjoying it. So tomorrow is Tattoo Tuesday. We're going to talk about jobs and tattoos, how it's affected now, how hopefully it will be affected in the future, how far we've come, um, some suggestions on if you have tattoos and you're trying to get a job, if you have any questions. Tattoo Tuesday is absolutely um, all about questions. I'll be watching my screen a whole lot more. So if you have any sort of questions on Tattoo Tuesday, be sure to um, come with your questions. Connie says, I met a book author on MySpace years ago. She invited me and other women and we did a weekend retreat and it was so cool. Yeah, you see, I want something like that, Connie. I want something to where I can sit there and I can look at the itinerary and I can be like, I approve, I approve, I approve. Yes, yes. This is going to be beneficial to me, to my platform. This is going to be awesome. We're all going to walk away with, with more knowledge, with, with, with connection. Not just like, hey, you know what? We're going to go to a foreign country. I, 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 and again, and there's nothing wrong with it. And it's, it seemed like a, a legitimate company. It just was not right for, for me and my platform and where I want to go and what I want to represent. So you just never know. You never know what project I'm going to come up with next. But that was definitely something that, Connie, I'm working on and I would love to do. And I think it would be really cool. And um, because I would love to um, just, like I said, just have like a small intimate group and do something like a retreat. So we'll just work on that. So if you're out there and you own a retreat and you want to hook a girl up, just let me know. Just send me some information. So I am very colorful. This um, red is really just starting to, um, it's starting to grow on me. It's definitely a little bit brighter than what I've worn. But again, I think that that's okay. I think I need to be brighter because you know what? I'm just starting to, to shine in all aspects and my makeup might as well match um <laughs> match everything else. So I will, again, the link for the quiz is down below, just in case you and your loved ones want to take it. I, I highly recommend it. I think knowing how somebody, um, your love language and your loved one's love language is extremely important. And I will go through and everything that I showed you that I unboxed, I will put a link down there also. Tina says, I'm so happy being with you today, Lonnie. Love you, girl. Love you too, Tina. You know what? And you are absolutely um, such a vital part of this platform. You all are, everybody. This is such a beautiful group. Connie says, let your light shine, girl. Yeah, you know what? As I inspire and I remind you on a daily basis to be bright, be bold, be brave, I and listening to my own advice. And instead of getting older and duller and hiding as I get older, I'm getting braver. I'm getting brighter. I'm getting bolder. I am no longer sitting there and wondering when life is going to happen for me. I am making life happen for me, you know, and that is just what, um, and that is just absolutely what I 
hope I inspire you to do. Maya says, I need to get and read the five love languages book. You know what? Just taking that little quiz really helped me a lot. But and I would absolutely recommend it. And just again, if nothing else, just knowing why you do what you do or your loved ones do what they do is knowledge is power. You know, even when it comes to your emotions, even when it comes to um, even when it, it, it comes to just dealing with people in your everyday life. So I highly recommend it. It's, it's been very interesting and very fulfilling for me. So again, I'm going to post the whole podcast special. Um, I am going to tell you right now that I was laughing so hard when it started. I had to, I thought I had ruined my makeup. I was laughing so hard. Apparently, I read, um, when I read, I move my lips and that really bothered Robert. So I will, um, post the video, um, for today. Ooh, really quick. I am working on my first recipe video and I found the recipe that I want to make and I'm going to be doing it today, but I'm making, um, lasagna, lasagna, no, zucchini lasagna. That's what I'm making. And it's, um, zucchini, and then it has spinach, mushrooms, shallots, and mozzarella cheese. And it looks super easy. So I'm 99.99% .99 that I can make this uh, zucchini lasagna. So I am going to be um, filming that and posting that one tomorrow. I went thrifting again, as you know, I showed you the stuff. I have that one. And then on Wednesday, right after our morning show, I'm heading to San Diego and I am, thank you, Courtney. Um, and I am going to go to the large free people store and then I'm going to go to the Zara store. So I'm going to be a couple, I'm going to hit two shops when I'm down in San Diego. So that's what we're going to do. I appreciate each and every one of you. Remember, again, be bright, be, bright, be bold, be brave. And I will see you all tomorrow. Have a 